Let us open with prayer. Lass uns mit Gebet beginnen. Dear Father in heaven, lieber Vater im Himmel, thank you that we have the privilege to appear before you. Danke, dass wir das Vorrecht haben, vor dir zu erscheinen. Thank you that you're the one who's uh, teaching us. Danke, dass du derjenige bist, der es lehrt. That we can call upon your name. Dass wir deinen Namen aufrufen, äh, auf deinen Namen rufen können. And that we can uh, learn of you. Und dass wir von dich, dir lernen können. Help us, Father, to know, be attentive to your words. Und hilft uns, dass wir aufmerksam äh, sind zu deinen Worten. And help us, Father, that we also would understand the mystery of the gospel uh, of the parables. Und helft uns, Vater, dass wir auch das Geheimnis von den Gleichnissen verstehen können. Und dass du uns entfaltest, das, was Jesus hier auf Erden gelehrt hat. And that you would your son unto us. Und dass du deinen Sohn uns offenbaren würdest. And that you would, uh, bring us to the point of full Und dass du uns zu dem Punkt von vollständiger Hingabe bringen würdest. Please, uh, speak to our minds and hearts through these parables. Bitte spreche zu unserem Verstand und unseren Herzen durch diesen Gleichnissen. And we thank you for your help. Und wir danken dir für deine Hilfe. In Jesus' name. In Jesu Namen. Amen. 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 Okay. Alright, so this evening we want to continue with the parables. So, heute Abend wollen wir mit den Gleichnissen fortsetzen. And um, I think it was on Friday evening or so we looked at a few of them. Und ich glaube, das war Freitagabend, die wir einige davon angeschaut haben. And just to remind ourselves a little bit. Und nur zu erinnern, etwa. So, for instance, let us go to Matthew 13. Zum Beispiel gehen wir zu Matthäus 13. All the parables are given to whom? Alle Gleichnissen sind wem gegeben? Yes, okay. I mean, yes, to those that hear. Right? Diejenigen, die hören. Because he says here in verse 9. Sagt in Vers 9. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples then ask in verse 10. Und in Vers 10 die Jungen fragen. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. So, <clears throat> yes. Okay, so here we can see. Yeah, for one class it is given and for the other class it is not given. Okay. Wir sehen, für die eine Klasse ist es gegeben, für die anderen nicht. And we know it's to, given to the class that seek after it and ask for und the understanding. Right? Es ist gerade die Klasse gegeben, die danach suchen und bitten. Okay. And what do they then receive? Und was erhalten sie dann folglich? Yeah, eyes that see, ears that hear, exactly. Okay. So, Augen, die sehen und Ohren, die hören. What are eyes that see and ears that hear? Was sind Augen, die sehen und Ohren, die hören? Means the word that given is conversion. Yeah, that's what you're asking. Ah, okay. Spiritual understanding. Okay. Geistliches Verständnis. Okay, because Jesus says, my words are spirit in our life. Okay. Jesus hat gesagt, meine Worte sind Geist und sind Leben. Okay, so... <coughs> Well, now let us remind ourselves, because Brother Mark here also touched on a few parables this morning. So, lasst uns erinnern, denn Brother Mark hat auch einige der Gleichnissen heute Morgen angesprochen. In Vers 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Yes? yes? So, where do we mark this? Und wo markieren wir das? Exactly. Okay. So right here. Yes. So went forth to 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 sow and why? Seemann ging voran um zu sehen und warum? Received the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he received the seed here, right? Hat den Samen erhalten. Also er 55. Isaiah 55. Okay, so he receives the seed and he now can 
give the seed to others. Okay. Er hat den Samen erhalten und kann es jetzt anderen verteilen. Okay. And when you also go down to verse 24, und wenn wir zu Vers 24 gehen, says another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Okay. So where is this? Wo ist das? Same place. Right? Same place. Okay. So therefore, and this is the parable of what? Das hier ist das Gleichnis von was? Mit den Tieren. Mit den Tieren. Weizen und Unkraut. So let us just collect here the parables that have a beginning point here. Okay. So lasst uns einfach den Gleichnissen aufsammeln, die hier ihre Anfangspunkt haben. So we saw the parable of the sower. So wir haben gesehen das Gleichnis von Seemann. Just. Okay, then the parable of wheat and tares. Then das Weizen von das Gleichnis von Weizen und Unkraut. So, what other parable do we have here? Welche weitere Gleichnisse haben wir hier? Okay, let's just maybe stay in this chapter here for now. So, bleiben wir vorerst in Matthäus 13. Is there another parable here that this would begin there? Eine weitere Gleichnis, die hier anfängt. Ja, yeah, the mustard seed, right? Die von Senfkorn. So let's go to verse 31 and 32. Verse 31 und 32. There's another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Okay, so where does it begin? So wo fängt es an? Same place. Same place, right? Der selbe Platz. Seed sown. Eine right? Same gesät. So you have the parable of the mustard seed. So das Gleichnis von Senfkorn. Das ist eben der Okay. Okay. And what do all these three parables also have in common? Und was haben all diese drei Gleichnissen gemeinsam? Ja, yeah, okay, they all same yeah. yeah, they have all the same end, right? Sie haben auch alle derselbe Ende. Okay. So what do you mean they have the same end? Yeah, and since they end at the same end. They all point to the same end, that they all at the same point end. Okay, so the parable of the sower. Das Gleichnis von Seemann brings you also down to here. Right? Dich hier hin. Parable of the wheat and tares also brings you down to here to the house. Right? Unkraut auch. In the parable of the mustard seed we have just read. Das Gleichnis von Senfkorn, so wie wir gelesen haben. Also brings you down to here when you become this great tree. Right? Dich auch hier hin mit diesem großen Baum. That's Hesekiel 17, exactly. Hesekiel 17. Okay. So let me just. Uh, maybe that's confusing if I, because, for instance, there are some stages in between. Um, how can I best illustrate this? Um, okay, it doesn't matter. We'll just keep it for now like this, and I just mentioned it. Okay. So, and now um, let us go and remain at the same chapter. Selbe Kapitel. Verse 33, the Vers next parable. 33, das nächste Gleichnis. I mean, they are not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it starts at the same place. Ich bin sicher, dass das auch an derselbe Ort. It says, another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. Ja, es ist selber wie, als wenn du der Same in die Erde legst. Ja, because it's the, here it says the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, and in verse 31 the kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, right? Es fängt an, also der Königreich des Himmels ist wie also diese ähm, äh, Sauerteig und in Vers 31 sagt Königreich des Himmels ist wie ein Senfkorn. So 
And the leaven in this parable is what? Und das Sauerteig hier in diesem Gleichnis ist was? The, the, the word. No, it's the truth, right? It's the Wahrheit. Okay, so because you also have the opposite leaven in the Bible. Es gibt auch andere entgegengesetzten Sauerteig in der Bibel. Yeah, the leaven of sin and malice, right? Sauerteig von Sünde und um, Böses, Malice, oh. Hatred, yeah. Bosheit. 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 Okay, so... And this is now the leaven that, or the seed that is sown here, right? This is Sauerteig here. This is the Same that here is seen. Is. And what does it do? What does it do? It leavens you right through and through. It's through soya dich, also ganz durch. Three measures, right? Three mass. So, maybe three angels, right? Three steps of the everlasting gospel. Three Schritten des ewigen Evangeliums. Brings it down to the end also. Bringt dich zum Ende hin. Yeah. Because what work begins here? Denn welche Werk fängt hier an? Which is related to the truth that is now so. Die im Zusammenhang mit der Wahrheit ist, die gesät ist. And what what begins here with respect to the truth? So was fängt hier an in Bezug auf die Wahrheit? You're born again here, right? Bist neu geboren hier. So what begins? So was fängt hier what does the, new, new life. What does the truth do to you? So was tut die Wahrheit? Yeah. Yes, sanctifies you. Okay. Es heiligt dich. So it's, it's this is what it says, the sanctification is the, the yeah. Sanctification sanctification is the work of a lifetime. 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 Heiligung ist das Werk eines lebenslange okay. Lebenslänge. So. Sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth. Word of truth. Heilige dich. Right? Heilige sie durch deine äh, Wahrheit, dein Wort ist wahr. So, and at the end you are sanctified through and through, you know, like Christ. Okay. Am Ende bist du ganz geheiligt worden, du bist wie Christus. Okay. Now, let us stay in this chapter. So bleiben wir weiterhin in diesem Kapitel. And, I mean, the next parable would be the hidden treasure, right? So diese nächste Gleichnis wäre der verborgene Schatz. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he definitely finds it at the end, right? So, auf jeden Fall findet er das am Ende. Okay, the question is only where is he starting? Where is he start starting to seek? Wo fängt er an zu suchen? It says there, it says, the word, when a man hath found, he hide it for joy and then go sell all that he hath and buy that field. Okay, in, in verse 45, right? So, Vers 45. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Talking about the end. Yeah, I mean, he finds it at the end. But the question is, is he not seeking already? Yes, that's the point. So you're seeking yeah. from the beginning, but you don't find it until the yes. end. That's when you go and sell all. Exactly. Yes. Okay, so... Uh, so you shall seek me... And you shall find me when you search me with all your heart. And that doesn't conclude until the yes. end. So the, the seeking must begin immediately and you will find him if you endure until the end, right? The Suchen fängt am Anfang an und du wirst ihn finden, wenn du ausharrst bis zum Ende. Okay. But that's obviously a parable we can maybe look also closer in the future. It's ein Gleichnis, die wir vielleicht in der Zukunft näher anschauen können. So, of, I just put them together, of treasure, hidden treasure and Then the next one, verse 47. The next one, verse 47. The dragnet. <coughs> yeah, this <coughs> fisher net. It says again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered un uh, of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So it's a similar to the 
wheat and tares. Yes. So this is ähnlich wie das Weizen und Knochen. The nets cast in at the beginning, and then it's, it's the gospel net that takes you all the way to the end where the two cloths are separated. Exactly. Okay. So das Netz ist am Anfang eingeworfen und es geht ganz bis zum Ende, wo das Evangelium abgeschlossen ist und die zwei Klassen getrennt werden. Christ makes you fishers of men and he fills you with his spirit. Christus macht dich Fischer von Menschen, wenn er dich mit äh, seinem Geist füllt. Yes, and so the word says, at Pentecost mark the opening of the gospel. And then Mike yeah. sagt, das Pfingsten markiert das Eröffnen, Eröffnen des Evangeliums. So, so far we saw all these parables, they begin here, and lead you down to here. So okay. weit haben wir gesehen, dass all diese Gleichnisse fangen hier an und führen bis dahin. Okay. Good. Um, there's one last here in chapter 13. Es gibt ein weiteres hier in Kapitel 13. 51 and 52. Verse 51 and 52. Just says, Jesus saith unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure, treasure things new and old. So this is this householder here, right? Is this a householder? And what kind of householder is he? And what for a householder is there? He's the one that's taking care of it. I think he's the husbandman who's taking care of the house of God for, until the Lord comes. Mm -hmm. Ist derjenige, der auf das Haus Gottes aufpasst, bis er kommt. And the new and old is the former and latter things that he's bringing forward constantly, leading you down to this point. Und das Neue yes. und Alte sind die vergangene und neue Sachen, die ständig offenbaren werden, die bringt zum Endpunkt hin. Okay, so it, and he's a, a scribe, right? Und es sagt hier, dass er ein Schriftgelehrter ist. Uh, so he had the scribes and the Pharisees. Es gab die Schriftgelehrten und die Pharisäer. Mm, but they were false scribes. Okay. Aber die waren falsche Schriftgelehrten. Yeah, this is a true scribe who is now able to bring forth the type and the anti-type, the old and the new. Right? Ist hier ein richtiger, also eine gute Schriftgelehrte, der imstande ist, also Altes und Neues hervorzubringen. Type and the anti-type. Also Typus und Antitypus. Okay. So, yes. Therefore, let us go to Matthew 24. There we can see this householder. Okay. Hier können wir diesen Haushalter sehen. Verse 45. Verse 45. Says, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? So what is this servant? So what is this Knecht? He's ruler over the household, right? Regiert über das Haushalt. So he's this householder, and what is he doing? So is this Haushalt, and what does he do? He knows the times, and he's given them the meat. Of the present truth according to that time. Yes, he give, gives old and new, right? Yeah, he gives the old and the new. Okay, so he shows type and anti-type relationship. Yeah. Okay. It shows the typus and anti-typus relationship. Let me introduce you to the present truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, what present truth? Es ist Meat in due season. Also, it is food for the right time, and the right time is the present truth. So, therefore, this. <coughs> This parable also, right, begins right here. Yes. Dieses Gleichnis auch beginnt gerade hier. Of, uh, what was it called? Good and evil servant, wise servant. So. Okay. Uh, uh, why, why are you separating that? I mean, that's Matthew 24. Sorry. I mean, that, that's the same illustration as, I mean, it's all part of Matthew 24, this thing here, not something separate. What, what do you mean separate? 
I mean, did well, you're just dealing with this these two two groups here, but um, this parable, right, begins here with when he's over set over the household. Right? He's not set over, and he must be faithful until the Lord comes until the end. This, this thing here is not a, it's not a separate thought from the rest of Matthew 24. It's just a, it's a thought that's added on on, on on top of it to give clarity to the, to the rest of it. I don't know why you bring this thought up. I never mentioned anything. No, no because it, you, you're putting it there as a separate parable. That's what I'm saying. No, it, it is a parable. Well, you maybe not understand what I'm saying. This, this here... It's not a separate parable from the rest of Matthew 24. It's all one thought. He, he just, just, he just begins to down. He just adds this thought on top of it. It's not a separate thought. It's not like a... Okay, so... Yeah, so the wise and evil servant, you know, they're set over the household here, right? Wise and evil? Mhm. Also der schlaue und böse Knechte sind über das Haushalt hier ähm, gesetzt. Okay, it's like, yeah, so they begin, but obviously one manifests an evil character at the end and the other one... The ten virgins also good, yes, exactly. Okay. Also die fangen hier an und am Ende eine manifestiert einen guten Charakter und der andere ein böses. Okay, so let, let's just uh, go through this here. Gehen wir da durch. Um, let's begin again in verse... Um, let's just begin in verse 42. It says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. So it's speaking about now the warning to be watchful for the coming of Christ. Yes. Sprich darüber, dass du wachsam sein solltest für das Kommen Christi. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily, I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over his over all his goods. Right. So. When the Lord comes, what will he do? So when the Herr kommt, was will er tun? Yeah, he, 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 yes, he... Would you give him a meat and juice season? He comes he here, do? right? So er kommt hier an. Okay, so, and he's now in basically accounting, or... He says, give an account, right? He says, uh, give the Rechenschaft. Yes, it's parable of the talents. Okay. Das Gleichnis von den Talenten. And when he finds you faithful, he's not setting you over his only his household, but over all his goods, it says. Wenn dich treu findet, er setzt dich nicht nur über seinen Haushalt, sondern über all seinen Güter. In Matthew 13 it says, To him that hath shall be given, and him that hath not shall be taken away. Matthäus 13 sagt, derjenige, der hat, ihm wird gegeben, und der, der nichts hat, selbst das, was er hat, wird weggenommen. Okay. And then when we continue, in verse 48, it says, But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, right? So, therefore, there is also an evil servant at the end. Right? Deswegen gibt es auch einen böse Diener am Ende. Okay, who was unfaithful with the talents entrusted to him here at the end. Okay. Untreu war mit den Talenten, die ihm hier anvertraut worden ist. Yeah, because when you just go to the next chapter, wenn wir zum nächsten Kapitel gehen, this is uh, parable of the talents in verse. Gleichnis von den Talenten. Beginning in verse 14. Fängt in Vers 14 an. 
Let's read there. Lesen wir von da. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto, him, unto them his goods. Okay, so he's now entrusting his goods unto them. Er vertraut hmm. seinen Gütern ihnen an. Makes you a householder. Okay. Das macht dich ein Haushalter. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So and then he comes back. Yes. Dann kommt er wieder. Verse 19. Vers 19. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So how is this servant called here? So wie ist diese Diener hier genannt? Good and faithful. Good and faithful. Right? Good and true. So... When it comes, there's one class of servants which is good and faithful, right? When it comes, gibt es eine Klasse von den Dienern, die gut und treu sind. Which is in this parable the wise. So the wise right? is, is the wise. Okay, so but uh, then he comes down to the two two talents. That's the same illustration, so right? Kommt zu den zwei Talenten. Das ist eben dasselbe wie bei den fünf. But then he comes down to the with one talent. Aber dann kommt zu derjenige mit den ein Talent. In now verse 26. Vers 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gathered and gather where I have not strawed. So he's called a Wicked and slothful servant. Right? So it's a böse and a träge or a faule diener genannt. Or in the other parable, an evil servant. Or okay. in den anderen Gleichnis, a böses diener. And what happens to him? Verse 28. Was geschieht mit ihm in Vers 28? Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is there? Was gibt es da? Weeping. weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right? So when you just go back to Matthew 24, 51 again. About the evil servant. And shall cut him asunder. And appoint him his portion which with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, same illustration. Okay. So but when we go back to Matthew 25, and let us read verse 29 one more time. It says, For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Where did we read this earlier already? So, wo haben wir das bereits gelesen? Yeah, Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Yeah. So, keep your finger here. Matthew 13 and then verse 12. Or let us even read verse 11. Okay, Matthew 13, beginning in verse 11. It says, He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Okay? So therefore we can see to the class that is given it's all the righteous of these parables. Okay? So we can see in the class that is given are all the right in all these gleichnesses. To the class that is not given 
are all these evil ones of these parables. Die Klasse, die nicht gegeben wird, das sind all die Bösen von diesen Gleichnissen. Okay. And the wicked ones will be cast into outer darkness at the end. Yes? Die Bösen werden in äußere Finsternis am Ende geworfen. And they even lose what they had before. Und sie verlieren sogar das, was sie zuvor hatten. Okay, so therefore they are in outer darkness because there's nothing left. Okay. Die sind in äußere Finsternis, weil es eben nichts übrig oder nichts übrig bleibt. Because it says you know, the palmer worm has devoured what the canker worm has left or something. Sagt, like der erste Insekt in Joel hat äh, verzehrt das, was der ähm, der zweite Insekt hat das verzehrt, was der erste Insekt gegessen hat. And at the end, the caterpillar devours everything, right? Am Ende der vierte Insekt verzehrt alles eben auch. Okay, good. So therefore we could see also the parable of the talents. Begins here. So, deswegen können wir sehen, dass das Gleichnis von den Talenten fängt eben auch hier an. But the parable of the talents is also which other parable? Das Gleichnis von Talenten ist auch zugleich welche weitere Gleichnis? The pounds, right? The parable of the pounds. Von, von Okay. Good. So when we go back to Matthew 25. So when we go back to Matthew 25. And then verse 31. And then verse 31. Says when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. And all its holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. That's the right answer. Okay, so. Yes, okay, exactly. Okay. So with the good and schlechte fische in nets. And. Um, but where would we mark this parable? Aber wo werden wir diese Gleichnis markieren? At the very end. Yeah. So, ganz okay. am Ende. So here. So right. eben hier. It would be the parable. So das Gleichnis von of, um, Sheep and Goats. Sheep and Goats. Yeah. Schafen und Ziegen. Okay. Because it begins with the second coming of Christ, right? Das fängt mit das zweite Kommen Christi. Okay, so therefore, uh, we just look at this parameter. You, you must put it here. Okay. So, wenn wir diesen Parametern anschauen, dann müssen wir es eben da setzen. But obviously, uh, when you would take all this and shift it to the first illustration, yeah, natürlich, yeah. wenn du das nehmen würdest und hier drauf setzen würdest, then this here. Uh, would come down here, so this parable would be also here. Okay. Würde diese Gleichnis auch denn hier sein. But it always marks the end, not Aber the beginning. Das markiert das Ende und nicht das Anfang. Yes, they mark always here the beginning. Die hier markieren das Anfang. Okay, good. And uh, let us just see the result here. Schauen wir die Resultat an, das Ergebnis. Go down to verse uh, 45 and 46. 45, 46. This speaks now about the the evil ones here. Da spricht hier über den Bösen. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Okay, so uh, therefore the, the, the goats are the, the evil servant and the slothful and Wicked servant, right? Deswegen die Ziegen sind die böse Diener, der träge Diener und wicked, evil. Right. It's the same thing. Böse Diener. Yeah. Okay. Gottlose. Also Gottlose yeah. Yeah. But the sheep are the wise servant and the good and faithful, faithful servant. Right? Die Schafen sind die weise, die gute und treue Diener. Or in the parable of the dragnet, that would be the good fish and the Fish, right? Gleichnis von den Fischernetz, das wäre denn gute und schlechte Fische sein. Okay. And um, yes. 
or wheat and tares. Yes? Weizen und Unkraut. So, wheat, tares. Weizen, Schafe, Unkraut, Ziegen. Parable of the sower. So, uh, Gleichnis von Seemann. Good ground. So, gutes Boden. Mm -hmm. And here are these three other options, the zone at the wayside. And here these other three options, also by the wayrand. So on, on stony places. On stony places. So on under thorns. Die unter Dornen und Disteln gesät. Okay, good. So <coughs> let's go back to Matthew 25, verse 1. Wir zurück zu Matthäus 25, Vers 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So, where does the parable of the ten virgins begin? So, wo fängt das Gleichnis von zehn Jungfrauen an? Same place. Same place. Same place. Yeah. 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 August 11th, 1840. 1. August 1840. Okay. Because this parable begins with the word vain, just expressing that it's hopefully repeating what he's just done in Matthew 21. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and where does it end? And for her das auf? Verse 11. Verse 11. Closed door. No. Oh, 10, rather. Okay. Verse 10, sogar. It says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with them to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Right? So the door is shut. The door is shut. And then when he says, I know you not, is therefore... Now the final review, you know, the executive part. Of the er sagt, ich kenne euch nicht, das ist der finale Untersuchung, das ausführende Teil des Gerichts. Just like in the other illustrations when he comes to ask these questions. Right? Also in den anderen Darstellungen, wenn er kommt und diesen Fragen stellt. Just like with the talents, for instance. Genau okay. so wie bei den Talenten zum Beispiel. Mm -hmm. Vers 6 und das Ausdruck Vers 6. It says, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Because of this quote. Oh, I know this is quoted, it's true. Um, that's always a difficult point, okay. Um, I don't know how to answer it at the moment. Okay. I mean, she says it. Okay. So we must go with it. Okay. Even though I don't fully know how to explain it. Okay. Weil sie sagt, dass Vers 6 der Schluss der Gnadenzeit ist. Das sagt sie auch, aber ich weiß das jetzt im Moment nicht so klar. But definitely. Yeah. That's not the, mm. the same point though. And the cry, the cry is good. Mm. That's, that's yeah, good. I know. It's, therefore, it doesn't make so much sense to my mind at the moment, okay. I don't know if you have an explanation then I'm No, she's just, in listen. the quote she's just referring to the time when the midnight cry is going forward, but it brings you to this this very point where the, the door shuts, that's where the cry, you know, the cry is reaching its culmination. I mean, that's where he comes, right? Yes, okay, so where would you mark the six on the line? I mean, where, where does it go in history? It went out before. we. We've shown this many times that on the seventh plague, which is the triumphal entry, mm -hmm. is the midnight cry. It's yes. the last warning, so that, that's where that, that would, would go. And it's given by the first group that's raised up there to give it. Because mm -hmm. Lazarus was leading the thing, and how did Lazarus come? He came, the stone was rolled away, he came out of the grave, right? So that's the same as the, the group at the end. So. Okay, yes. In this way, yes, okay. So midnight cry would be here this last warning message. Okay. But, but just a mm -hmm. thought on that. Remember at the beginning of the sixth year, uh, Mordecai, he 
he's the first one, he begins to give it for the first group, because he says that, you know, he gets them and gave this loud and bitter cry. Am Anfang von sechsten Plage gibt's Mordecai, das für die erste Gruppe, der gibt diese laute und bittere Ruf. Mm -hmm. Right here, right. Yeah, so they are for the, the first group, and then from the seventh to the second group. Yes. The, uh, the only question is always, you know, which one is the parable marking? You know, is, is this in, at the sixth plague only a principle of the midnight cry, or is it oh, actually... No, the only point I would make is that somebody's going to give the cry, so you have to mark that point. And for, for us, at least, if you're dealing with this group, the cry is given by the prophet. So you would mark it from the seventh plague forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I mean, because we saw that all the parables, they always deal with the last, the last group. Right? Weil wir gesehen haben, dass alle Gleichnisse, die behandeln immer der letzte Gruppe. So therefore you can only take the principle in the same illustration here. So Deswegen kann man nur das Prinzip von derselben Darstellung in um, der sechste Plage nehmen. Okay, good. Yeah, everybody followed? Okay. Kann jeder folgen? So... Then um, let's go now to Matthew 18. So Matthäus 18. But we will go into all these parables in more detail. Uh, just first now want to just give this framework. Okay. Aber wir werden in diesen Gleichnissen in mehrere Details um, nachträglich reingehen. Im Moment möchte ich nur jetzt diese Rahmenwerk um, erstmal aufstellen. Okay, so Matthew 18. Matthäus 18. And here, with this parable, I want to look at uh, more closely tonight. Okay. Diese Gleichnis möchte ich heute Abend ein bisschen näher anschauen. Let us begin with verse 21. Dann fangen wir in Vers 21 an. <coughs> no, no, not now. Okay. So it says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay his lord, uh, not to pay, his lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Okay, so, to verse 27. Das Vers 27. What can we see here? Was können wir hier sehen? Compassion first. Yes. Yeah, so he had compassion on him, right? So er hat Erbarmen mit ihm. So it's this time of mercy. Okay. Also diese Zeit der Gnade, Zeit der Liebe. Yes, he takes an account, right? So, verse 23. Rechnet mit ihm ab, Vers 23. And he forgives him and he er vergibt ihm. loses him, right? Und er löst ihn. Okay. So I'm open to this, but I would understand because we saw the accounting at the end takes place here, right? Also, wir haben gesehen, dass das Abrechnen findet hier am Ende statt. Okay, but is there also an accounting for the first birth? Aber gibt es auch eine Abrechnung für das erste Gebot? Yes, right? Ja. And we saw that the first typifies the second, right? Wir sehen, der erste schattet den zweiten voraus. Okay, so, and are your sins forgiven at the first birth? Sind deine Sünden am ersten Gebot vergeben? Yes, okay. And are you bound before that? Ja, und bist du zuvor gebunden? Yes, okay. Auch. So, and then verse 28. Jetzt Vers okay. 28. I would also put it here, begin. 
I so mean, the point is where where he's loosed the dead has to be where his sins are blotted out, right? So it has yeah. to be in the investigative judgment. I also thought thought this, but C can't be afterwards. It's all no. Good. I mean, in the first birth, your sins are covered, right? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. They're because the same thing. no, no. The problem is, if if he's his sins are blotted out, he cannot be punished at the end. So it can, can't be the blotting out. Does Ma is teaching the same thing because there's the other parable where he comes into him, right, and he says, "Did I not forgive you?" Yeah, that's the, the other other half of the parable. Okay, so the point is that he has to be forgiven at the be at the beginning, right? So that's what I'm saying. It has to be the same thing. No, uh, let, let's just read and you, we can no, look at this. You maybe you missed my point. The, the investigative judgment at the end is typified in the box at the beginning, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm just all I'm saying is just so we understand is that's still an investigation, right? It's just not it's just not the final investigation, right? Yes. So. I'm asking you, are you saying that this takes place in the little box at the beginning? I'm saying this is, yeah, marking his first birth when his sins are forgiven, oh, right? Yes, okay, okay, good. So, <clears throat> now let us continue with 28. So, verse 28. It says, But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence, and he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, and saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So, what, you know, what was his fellow servant asking him? So, was had sein Mitknecht ihm gefragt? To forgive him, it's like this counterfeit at the beginning. He's, he's like doing an investigation on you, making you the scapegoat at the beginning. So he macht eine Untersuchung auf dich und macht am Anfang aus mm -hmm. dir einen Sündenbock. Yes, okay, we will come to this shortly. Okay. Yeah. So, first, yeah, he wanted him, so the fellow servant came and said, forgive me my debt. Okay. Der Mitknecht kam zu ihm und sagt, vergebe mir meine Schuld. So, when the king forgave The servant, the debt, so als okay. der König diesen Diener sein Schuld vergeb, vergab, he, he lost him. Er okay. hat ihn gelöst. Uh, but here he didn't lose him, but he bound him. Aber hier löste er ihn nicht, sondern bindete ihn. By throwing him into in prison. Dem, okay. dass er ihm ins Gefängnis war. So in this this debt that he has, what is the debt in this parable that he has? Diese Schuld, die er hier hat, was ist das? Yeah, okay, so it's money, but what does it illustrate? It's is for gold, but what stands it? You've done something against you. Yes, okay. Was was dein Bruder angetan? So he basically asked for forgiveness. Please forgive me this thing that I did unto you, right? Er bittet um Vergebung. Vergebe mir das, was ich dir antat. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want to forgive. He, aber er will nicht. He holds it against him. Okay. Er hält es gegen ihm an. So and because he holds it against him, he he wants revenge, right? He wants him to pay for. His misdeed. Weil er das gegen ihm hält, er möchte Rache haben, er möchte, dass er zahlt für seinen Missetat. Oh, yes, let's just jump down um, to verse 32, how this servant is called. Vers 32, wie diese Diener genannt ist. It says, then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant. Böse Knecht. Who was the wicked servant? Wer war der böse Knecht? Where, in which other parable did you Gleichnis haben wir gelesen. Talents, right? Von den Talenten. But The wicked servant is also the. Aber der böse Knecht ist auch. The evil servant, right? Der böse Knecht. And what did the evil servant do? Und was tat diese böse Knecht? Yeah, yes. smote his yes. fellow brethren. Er hat right? seinen Mitknecht geschlagen. So let us go there. So here he he cast his fellow servant in the prison. So okay. Hier warf er seinen Mitknecht in den Gefängnis. And when you keep your finger here and go to Matthew 24 again. Halte den Platz hier, geht zu Matthäus 24 wieder. And um, verse 48. Verse 48. But, and if that evil servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. 
The Lord of that servant shall come in, the, in a day when he looketh not for him, in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, so here, this evil servant is now smiting the so is böse Knecht here fellow servants. Right? So that's when we go back to Matthew 18. So when we go back to Matthew 18. Gehen, this is the servant that will do what to you? Das ist der Knecht, der was wird er dir antun? Deliver you up to er wird dich prison, right? Ausliefern äh, zu Gefängnis. Right here. Yes. Ich hier. And why does he do so? Und warum tut er das? Because he didn't forgive. Yeah, he didn't forgive. Okay. Er hat nicht vergeben. Yes. So it shows us yeah, that if you hold things in your heart towards your brother or sister, so it shows us that when you hold things in your heart towards your brother or sister, you will do this thing here. Du okay. wirst dieses Übeltat hier tun. Yeah. It's already predestinated. Yes. Okay. Sogar vorausbestimmt. Yeah. So the only remedy you have not to deliver up your brother is by forgiving your brother or your sister everything. And the only Gegenmittel, die du hast, dass du sie nichts auslieferst, ist, dass du einem Bruder oder Schwester alles vergibst. It's, it's, it's because when you um, in verse 33 verse 33, it, uh, 33. 16. Vers 33 mm -hmm. verbindet er das mit Hesekiel 16. Because it's got compassion and pity. And hier mm -hmm. hat es um, Mitleid und Erbarmen. Und in Hesekiel 16 sie hatten keins. Davon. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, let us go through these verses and then we come down to these points. So, gehen wir durch die Versen zu diesen Punkten, so, wenn wir dann kommen. Let us go to, um, let's read again verse 29. So, Vers 29 lesen wir noch. It says, And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into the prison till he should pay the debt. So he wants revenge. He wants that everything that he did unto you, he will pay for it. Okay. Er möchte Rache. Also er möchte, dass alles, was du ihm angetan hast, dass du dafür zahlen musst. So he has no compassion upon you. Er hat kein Erbarmen mit dir. Um, it goes on to say, verse 31. Vers 31. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their lord all that was done. So who are these fellow servants here? Wer sind diesen Mitknechten, Vers 31? Because we are here on the line, right? Wir sind hier auf der Linie. So mm -hmm. here, the evil servant casts the good servant into prison. So okay. hier werft der böse Knecht, der gute Knecht ins Gefängnis. And smiting the fellow brethren. Und schlagen okay. ihrem Mitknechten. So, how, how do you tell the Lord something? So wie sagst du dem Herrn was? Tell him. Yeah, by praying. Okay. Yeah, so you cry unto the Lord and tell him uh, what's happening. Okay. Du rufst zum Herrn und sagst ihm, was geschieht. That's what you read in the Psalms. Okay. Das ist, was wir in den Psalmen lesen. And David is telling the Lord what the wicked are doing. Okay. David, David sagt dem Herrn, was die Bösen tun. Okay, and then the Lord hears. Right? Und der Herr hört. Verse 32. Vers 32. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. So, now he's called before God, right? So, jetzt ist er vor dem Herrn gerufen. And just like the three Hebrew boys this morning. Genauso wie die drei Hebräern. They stood before the king at the end, right? Standen am Ende vor dem König. Yes. When Christ comes back, who's standing before him? So, when Christus kommt wieder, wer steht vor ihm? Sheep and goats, right? Schafen und Ziegen. Uh, those with the talents, they must give an account. Die okay. mit den Talenten müssen eine Rechtfertigung, eine Abrechnung geben. So both classes will stand before him Beide in Klassen the final review. Beide werden okay. vor ihm stehen in der finale Untersuchung. Just to prove this, it's already proven, but just give another verse to it. Ein weiteres Verweis dafür zu geben. Keep your finger in Matthew 18, let us go to Romans. Halte den Platz hier und geht zu Römerbrief. Chapter 14, I think. Chapter 14. Yes. Romans 14, verse 10. Römer 14, Vers 10. It 
says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay. Everyone will stand there. So okay. Jeder wird vor ihm stehen. In the judgment seat of Christ is which judgment? Und das uh, Gericht Thron des Herrn. Welche Gericht ist das? Yeah, the final review. Right? Finale Untersuchung. Okay. So, this is what we can read here in Matthew 18. Okay? Das ist, was wir hier in Matthäus 18 lesen. When we go back to verse 32. Okay. Zu Vers 32 gehen. So this wicked servant now stands before the Lord. Der böse okay. Knecht steht jetzt vor dem Herrn. And he's this friend without a wedding garment. Und das okay. ist dieser Freund ohne Hochzeitsgewand an. Okay. And he tells him, Oh, the wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. Okay. So what is the Lord requiring of us in this time here? Was verlangt der Herr von uns in dieser Zeit hier? Compassion and pity on Exactly. And why? Erbarmen und Gnade zu deinen, ähm, deinen Brüdern und Schwestern. Warum wo? Because he says, go and do that likewise. Exactly. Yes. Er geht und tut euch ebenso. So here he passes by with great compassion. So okay. hier zieht an dich vorüber mit großes Erbarmen. And that you also should then show compassion to your fellow servants. Okay. du denn auch großes Erbarmen zu deinem Mitknecht zeigen musst. Be thou perfect as thy father in heaven is. Perfect, right? Sei perfekt, so wie dein Vater im Himmel auch perfekt ist. Okay. So, and here he, he didn't have compassion in the time of compassion. Okay. Hier hatte er keine Erbarmen zu der Zeit des Erbarmens. Therefore the Lord is punishing him now. Deswegen okay. bestraft der Herr ihn jetzt. Verse 34. Vers 34. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespass. Okay, so it's already written. Okay, it's bereits geschrieben. If you have anything in your heart towards your brother and you're not willing to give it up, so wenn du was im Herzen hast gegen deinen Bruder und du bist nicht bereit, äh, bereit das aufzugeben, you will end up. In this everlasting torment, okay? Wird's in diese ewige Qual enden. Not because the Lord wants it, but he must give you over to Satan, so who is the weil, tormentor, okay? Nicht weil der Herr das möchte, sondern er möchte, er muss dir den Satan übergeben, also der der große ähm, Quäler. Quäler. So, and that's the point. Yeah? So he just decides, okay, you belong to me, and you belong to Satan. Der okay. Herr trifft einfach eine Entscheidung, der sieht, du gehörst mir an, du gehörst Satan an. Okay, so whoever belongs to Satan, he gives you to Satan and Satan will torment you. Okay. Satan angehört, er wird dich Satan übergeben und Satan wird dich quälen. Okay, let's go now to Ezekiel chapter 33. Gehen wir zu Hesekiel 33. Right here, Und yeah. gerade hier, you must forgive all those that are nice to you, right? Du musst diejenigen, all diejenigen vergeben, die nett zu dir sind. Mm -hmm. Richtig. Yeah. You must forgive your fellow brethren that smite you, okay? Du musst sogar deinen Mitgeschwister vergeben, die dich erschlagen. And those that don't forgive you and that will cast you into prison. Okay. Auch diejenigen, die dich nicht vergeben werden und ins Gefängnis werfen werden. Okay. So, and that's why you must constantly pray. Deswegen okay. musst du beständig beten. Yeah. Pray for your enemies. He Betet says, right? für eure Feinde, sagte er. Yeah. It's not in our own strength that we can love our enemies. It's impossible. Okay. Es ist unmöglich im eigenen Kraft unsere Feinden zu lieben. And we want to retaliate immediately. So, okay. Wir wollen sie ähm, erwidern, erwidern. Yeah, sofort so erwidern, so, yeah. zurückschlagen. So yeah. Okay, so therefore we need to be constantly looking up and praying without ceasing. So okay. Deswegen müssen wir beständig hinaufschauen und ohne Unterlass beten. That we can exercise the same compassion that the Lord is exercising upon us. Dass wir denselben Erbarmen ausüben können, die der Herr hat mit uns. Because it says here in Ezekiel 33. Denn in Ezekiel 33 sagt es. Um, Verse 12. Und in Vers 12. 
says, Therefore, thou Son of Man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. For as the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. It's like the, the um, parable of the lost son and the yes. older son. Mm -hmm. One falls and the other one is brought back in. Yes. It's like the likeness of the lost son. The older son falls back and the other is wieder hineingebracht. Yes, the old son was always in the house, right? So the alte Sohn war immer im Hause. But at the end he manifested this pharisaical spirit. Aber am Ende manifestierte diese pharisäische Geist. The lost son, the prodigal son, he comes back and repents at the end. So der verlorene Sohn, der kommt zurück und am Ende tut er Buße. Okay, but here also it says, yeah, the, so the, the righteous cannot stand with his righteousness in the day that he so we saw this servant in Matthew 18, he got loosed at the beginning. Right? And God forgave him all his debts. So he was no righteous. Okay. But it, over the time he then became this wicked servant. Okay. Über die Zeit hinweg, er ist dieser böse Knecht geworden. And at the end he was unmerciful to his fellow servant. Am Ende war er unbarmherzig gegenüber seinem Mitknecht. And then came the day that he sinned. Okay. Und das ist der Tag, wo er gesündigt hat. And therefore his righteousness was not remembered anymore and God punished him. Okay. Deswegen war seine Gerechtigkeit nicht mehr erinnert und Gott bestrafte ihn. He had no garment on anymore. Er hat kein Gewand okay. an sich mehr. Okay, and verse... 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Okay, so all the righteousness you might have done here in God's strength. So, all the Gerechtigkeit, die du vielleicht hier zuvor in Gottes Kraft verübt hast. Yeah. You don't hold if you're not enduring until the end. Wenn du nicht bis ganz zum Ende ausharrst. It will be as if you did nothing righteous before. Es wäre wie, als hättest du zuvor gar nichts Gerechtes getan. Yeah, but it says here, if he trusts to his own righteousness, that means that at the end test, you, you do trust yes. in yourself. Also, vertraue in deine eigenen Gerechtigkeit. Das ist der Tag, wo du sündigst, wenn du aufhörst, auf Christi zu vertrauen und fängst dann an deiner eigenen Stärke zu vertrauen. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, but on the other hand, uh, andersrum aber th this chance yeah, for the prodigal son to return okay. es gibt diese chance für den verlorenen sohn um, zurückzukommen if he accepts the exceeding bright light Und wenn er das äußerst helles licht akzeptierst okay so but the point is we can clearly see you know, that the, the parameter of most of the parables is from here to here okay. der punkt ist was wir klar sehen können ist dass der Parametern für meist der Gleichnissen sind eben von hier bis da. So we also looked here Matthew 18, this parable of the unmerciful um, servant, right? Also, wir haben auch in Matthäus 18 diese Gleichnis von den unbarmherzigen Dienern, Diener angeschaut. So, it does not mark the end or the beginning. Not the beginning, right? Here he's forgiven, and then he casts his fellow servant here. Okay, it begins here. Okay, okay. All right. okay. okay. so, um, yes, and this parable teaches us how important it is uh, to keep 
this forgiving spirit. Okay. Und diese Gleichnis zeigt uns, wie wichtig es ist, diese äh, Haltung der Vergebung ähm, zu bewahren. And this is Satan's most, let's say, powerful tool, okay, to cause us to fall. Satan stärkste Waffe, die er hat, die uns zum Fall bringen kann. Yeah, because he always plays with our faults and failings. Er okay. spielt immer mit unseren Fehlen und Unzulänglichkeiten. Wants to pit us against each other. Okay. Er möchte, dass wir gegeneinander um, aufstehen, kämpfen. Yeah. And then hold grudges in our hearts. Okay. Dass wir Groll in unserem Herzen hegen gegenseitig. Envy and bitterness and all these things. Okay. Neid und Bitterkeit und solches. And jealousies and Eifersucht. Yeah. And all these things, okay? And solche Sachen. And then, uh, we obviously separate ourselves from Christ through this. Und dadurch trennen wir uns von Christus. And then we trust, obviously, in our own strength, okay? Und dann folglich vertrauen wir im eigenen Kraft. And then we become like these Pharisees. Und dann okay. werden wir wie diese Pharisäer werden. And then the Pharisees, they become the accusers of the brethren. Pharisäer werden diese Ankläger der Geschwister werden. They despise the publican. Die verachten äh, der Zöllner. And they will cast them into prison. Und sie okay. werden sie dann ins Gefängnis werfen. But they are the ones also then that will unfortunately go into everlasting darkness. Sie okay. sind aber auch diejenigen, die leider ins ewige Fensternis gehen werden. Okay. So the parables teach us uh, clearly to be very watchful. Uh, you begin here, but you must endure unto the And, okay. Die Gleichnisse lehren uns, dass wir sehr wachsam bleiben müssen. Du fängst zwar hier an, aber wir müssen ganz bis zum Ende aushalten. And only then we are saved. Nur dann sind wir gerettet. Yes. Okay. Amen. Okay. So, by God's grace, tomorrow we will continue with the parables. Okay. So, Gott möchte, wenn wir morgen mit diesen Gleichnissen fortsetzen. And there is obviously much more parables. Es gibt natürlich viel mehr Gleichnisse. Okay, good. Then let us close with prayer.